you lay in the sun. When you start burning, that's nature saying, hey, it's time to get out. You've run out of antioxidants because it's uh -huh. antioxidants uh -huh. are such a great antidote to the solar radiation. That's the problem is that you don't burn. So you're sitting there 10 times longer than you normally would because you're not burning. But then all the infrared rays are going deeper into your cells and causing the melanoma. In today's busy world, how can we find the inspiration, knowledge, and energy to live a healthy and empowered life? If we balance and harmonize our mind, exercise our body, live according to the laws of nature, and connect to spirit, can we find a way to heal, become our authentic self, and live our purpose with love? I am your hostess, Amy Fournier, and welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite. Welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. This show is about helping you to be more healthy and fit in mind, body, and spirit, as well as to tap into your intuition, your true source of power, and awaken your authentic self. Hey, we all feel better when we go out in the warm, bright sunshine, don't we? Have you ever been like working for a long time or stuck inside? Or maybe it's been raining for a few days in a row and boom, all of a sudden that sun comes out and you step outside in the fresh air. You feel that warm father sun on your skin and it just brightens your whole mood. Well, guess what? It's very, very real. There's a real physiological chemical reaction that's happening. It's not just in your imagination and it goes a lot deeper than skin deep, no pun intended. So we know the sun is critical for our mind, body, and spirit. And in today's episode is part two with my guest, Dr. Elizabeth Plurd. Make sure you check out episode 116 was her first part of being on my show where we talk a very important episode, by the way, about hormones, hysterectomies, as well as the effect of your cell phone, your computer, your tablet, your smart house, whatever it may be, your Bluetooth on your hormonal level and everything you need to know about that stuff. If you're a woman, it's a must listen to. Okay. So that's episode 116. This is the next episode, part two, where we talk about the additional research that Dr. Plurd has conducted over 12 years worth of research on the effects of the sun. And in particular, sun screens and sun lotion and how in her research, she has concluded that that is directly contributing to skin cancer. That's right. Instead of preventing skin cancer, her research has concluded that it is causing skin cancer. And not only is it causing skin cancer, but it is killing the coral reefs in the ocean, which is basically the oxy oxygen supply of the planet, hello, kind of important, not to mention screwing up the whole ecosystem. So once again, man-made synthetic chemicals are disrupting the natural cycle of all of life. And we can stop this, you guys. We can stop it. This show is not about the doom and gloom, okay? Because we have to educate people what the problem is because they're not connecting dots, what's going wrong, what we're doing. And then we say, this is a better way to do it. So I never just tell you what the problem is and leave you hanging or let, you know, tell you to go buy stuff. Okay. I always try to give you the solution right here on the show for free. So for those of you who leave reviews and share the show, that's your way of saying thank you to me. And I really appreciate it by the way. So Dr. Plurd is a clinical laboratory scientist and North American Menopause Society certified menopause practitioner. Her education is augmented by invaluable experience gained while working with cutting edge DNA and cancer medical research labs. When her research revealed that sunscreens actually promote melanoma and harm all of life in the oceans as well as human life, she had been writing books, articles, and speaking to warn the world that sunscreens are toxic hazards. When quote unquote kids safe sunscreens were marketed, Dr. Plurd redoubled her efforts to dispel the myth that zinc and titanium oxide are quote unquote kids safe. They are not everybody. They are not. It's just another marketing trick. Not only are they not kid safe, they're not ocean safe as well. And they kill the phytoplankton, the bottom of the food chain in the oceans. To bring awareness of these pressing dangers to our society, 
Dr. Pleur devoted her life to presenting her groundbreaking research of the truth behind today's environmental damage at medical conferences and co consumer groups. She is dedicated to not only saving ocean life, but also protecting kids from the toxic and hormonal effects of sunscreens. They're toxic for all of us, everybody. She's the author of several books. You definitely want to check out the other episode with Dr. Plourd. Again, that's 116. On this show, we talk about how sunscreens promote melanoma, how and why this works, what's happening, and most importantly, what you can do instead to enjoy the sun safely which is so critically important for dozens and dozens of processes in the body. How sunscreens promote not only aging, but liver spots, freckles, sunspots, and sun damage. Basically, it's totally backwards everything that you thought. They're actually causing the problem rather than presenting it. How they're just basically not necessary and what you can use instead. And most importantly, how you can create your own internal natural sunblock with your diet. Lastly, we talk about the damage to the coral reefs and the whole ecosystem that it's being caused by these artificial sunscreens and the sprays, by the way, are even worse. You're in for a good one. And this is very appropriate at any time of year. Of course, the effects on the ecosystem are 24 seven and they don't go by a calendar. Okay. It's not just happening in July. This could be happening in December in the coral reefs. So this episode is always timely, always appropriate. And thanks again for sharing it so we can really help the planet and help each other and prevent skin cancer, sun cancer, and help people feel healthy, safe, and happy. Let's join Dr. Elizabeth Plourd. Okay. And welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. And today my guest is Dr. Elizabeth Plourd, who's back on the show due to popular demand. And this time we're talking about sun and sunscreen, safe sun use. How safe is sunscreen? Does it really work? What's going on with skin cancer, light, and all that good stuff? Stuff. So, Dr. Plourd, first of all, welcome back on the show. Thank you so much. I so appreciate the fact that you you are totally understanding all the messages that I'm trying to get out to the world because it's just amazing how we the truth has been misrepresented in so many ways, and particularly about that sunscreens are valuable and when they're not, they're very harmful, very harmful to us. Yes. And you're going to, you're going to educate us on all that. And like I mentioned in the introduction, everybody, you definitely want to check out the episode with Dr. Plourd, where we get into hysterectomies, ovaries, hormones, uh, menopause, and even, uh, the effects of our computers, phones, 5g Lyme disease symptoms, headaches, uh, infertility, all these different things. And this is related to today is why I bring it up, but check out that episode. I apologize. I don't have the number on me right now. But if you just look up her name and my show, it'll come up. But uh, the reason why I bring that up is because the similar thing with some of these symptoms of um, using sunscreens and lack of natural direct sunlight, not only on our eyes, but on our skin can like mask is weird symptoms that people aren't connecting the dots. So let's go ahead and, and go right down this rabbit hole with your extensive research. And you actually go out due to your research and you say that sunscreens actually cause melanoma. They cause skin cancer, not prevent it. Please tell us how you came to that conclusion. All the radiations from the sun go to different depths in the skin. And it's the UVB that goes through the shallowest depth and that's what causes sunburn. And just blocking the sunburn does not block all the other radiations that are coming from the sun. And those go deeper, they definitely go deeper and they do cause skin cancers, melanomas. They don't really uh, monitor the amount of skin cancer, the squamous cell or those things, but the melanoma they do keep track of and there's no doubt about it. It has definitely climbed ever since they introduced sunscreen. So the, you're saying the rate of melanoma and skin cancer has increased with the advent of sunblock and sunscreen. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And we also know, uh, based on research from what I understand that even like night shift workers and people that are indoors all the time, they actually have higher rates of skin cancer. So it's just like, does it's illogical, like something's going on here, right? 
it is. It's not the sun. It's really not. And even uh, the Navy, the people in the Navy that are inside have more melanoma than the people that work on the outside decks on the ships. On the so, actual ships. Yeah. yeah. So that, that proves it too. So we evolved with the sun. We need the sun. The sun helps us that UVB helps us create vitamin D. And without vitamin D, our, it's, it's a hormone and we need it in our bodies. Um, so rickets, when people start moving to the cities and people start getting rickets because they were no longer in the sun, when they finally figured it out, so they put vitamin D in bread and tried to you know increase the vitamin D. But we really got rid of uh, rickets, but with all the sunscreens that we're doing and stay out of the sun, you know, even National Stay Out of the Sunday, just it. it wow, is wow, that one of those? those? Yes, <laughs> I, wow. I know. I I couldn't believe it when I I wrote a whole newsletter on it because I was so shocked wow. Wow. that uh, that people don't believe this and uh, that we need it. So, um, but Ricketts has come back. Ricketts has definitely come back, and and I hate to say it, but the the Muslim women who are just totally gowned, you know, they're seeing rickets in their babies because they're not getting vitamin D. So we really need vitamin D. And the interesting thing from what I understand is that the, there's different rays of the sun and the sun is not only required for all of life, but to your point, I mean, how logical is that? Like, would the creator like make something that's bad for us that's the thing that's the source and the sustenance for all of life. I mean, obviously we're talking about, you know, intelligent use, like you don't want to go out in there and bake yourself in olive oil all day, you know, like for hours and hours, but it's something so inherently illogical to think that this is bad for us, but, it, but life wouldn't exist without the sun. So it has to be right. for our good. And, and the different rays of the sun, the wavelengths are all like, independent nutrients kind of like if you get you get vitamin d you get vitamin c you get vitamin k you know there's different nutrients your body needs to function optimally the same goes for the sun's uh rays and wavelengths at different times of the day there's different frequencies that turn on the switches in our cells in, in different capacities so there's a diff the difference between a sunrise sunlight and a 10 o'clock and a 12 noon and a 4 p.m they're all different frequencies that are like instructions to our body the same way nutrients are instructions so these are all very important components of respect and appreciation for the sun and proper use with knowledge that people don't know about absolutely and so the, the, I got involved in researching this because I learned to scuba dive 50 years ago and I got to see the gorgeous coral. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just breathtaking mm -hmm. down there. And then I got to see the coral dying down to just white mass of dead. And, uh, and I was, I've been able to swim in, um, in uh, Hawaiian waters for a long time and I was swimming in water about 12 years ago in Hawaii freezing had goosebumps all over my body and I was just forcing myself in because I knew that I was flying out the next day and I wanted to get my swimming in and I came out of that really cold and the headline on the newspaper said our corals dying due to global warming and I thought, this is colder water than I felt in 30 years here. And how could they be dying if the water's uh, colder? Mm -hmm. And in my research, I found out that the whole North Pacific, all the way from North America to China, was colder than normal during about five, six year period. And so, and then I immediately found the proof that the coral die in 96 hours on exposure to very little sunscreen, very little. Like if you put it on, took a shower, and then got in the water, the wow. corals did in 96 hours. So the coral is very sensitive to this sunscreen, and it's killing, the sunscreen is killing the coral. Absolutely. And, and it's because it's toxic. These are synthetic 
man-made toxic, not natural chemicals that are killing the plankton and the sea life, not to mention us, which we're going to get into. Um, and the coral reef is like the oxygen source for the world. It's kind of important. It's not just an aesthetic thing. Right. That's true. And for all the life in the ocean too. Uh, and one thing that also brought it home to me was um, swimming in uh, Grand Cayman. And they had a beautiful reef that was within walking distance of the cruise ships and just snorkel. It wasn't very deep. And so uh, in 1980, I was there, gorgeous coral. And every single time I got off the boat, sunscreens were developed in 1978, 79. Every single time they were telling people, put on your sunscreen, put on your sunscreen, put on your sunscreen. And I was back five years later in 1985. That whole expanse of coral was just dead white. Wow. Because it got thousands of thousands of coral going in with the sunscreen on them. So it's, it's just, uh, it is. So I felt like I really had to write another book because I, the coral is so incredible and we're losing it everywhere. Everywhere there's tourists. So, and they tried to say the global warming when, so in 1999, the water was warmer because of solar flares, not because of anything we did. Hmm. And wherever the water was warmer, if there were tourists, that's when the coral died. But if there were no tourists, they didn't have coral death, even though the water was warmer too. So it was definitely the sunscreen chemicals that are causing the problem. Okay, so these synthetic chemicals are killing the ocean life and all the ramifications of that. Let's not forget about all of us who eat fish and seafood. We're eating the fish that are poisoned. So even if it's wild and sustainably caught and responsibly caught, I mean, it's just a, it's a chain of sad events that we all have to be cognizant of to correct. It's not too late to course correct. So tell us what's going on with sunscreens, Dr. Plourd. Why are they toxic? Why are they not only poisoning all of nature and all these poor innocent animals and creatures, but also us? What's happening here chemically, biochemically? They are very potent hormones, very potent. Um, and so more anti-testosterone than the drug that they used to give to prostate cancer patients to block their testosterone. Mm -hmm. And so it's that potent, that anti-testosterone. So wow. they're very hormonally active. And a lot of them are anti-testosterone. A couple are estrogenic, but most anti-testosterone. So that's a huge issue. It really is. It's It causes what they call intersex fish. So the fish have testicle material growing in the ovaries ovary material growing in the testicle wow. area and uh, they actually call them intersex fish and they actually quit flying because they don't know what they are they don't know if they're male or female and that one chemical that one chemical uh is in 95 percent of americans blood because it's now in our water because it doesn't come out in water so even if you're not using sunscreen like me i haven't used sunscreen in probably 20 years um, and I live in Miami part time of the year. Uh, it can be in my blood, absolutely, because of the water absolutely. supply. Ninety five percent of Americans, and it doesn't come out in filters, so you can't filter wow. it out. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so we know that they're anti hormone, they're anti testosterone, which is a disaster, particularly for men, causes sexual uh, organ screw up not to mention mental confusion right like your gender and like what what am i and how am i feeling hormones are feelings you know those are our feeling chemicals absolutely and all these young people who are so uh gender bended that they they don't know and i know they really feel that way because it's the hormones that are in them it's the sure. chemical hormones it's very the real chemical anti-testosterone they mm -hmm. yeah it's very real. I know I mean, they we... feel that way. I that's that, that's how I felt mm -hmm. when I couldn't get hormones my body could absorb. I didn't feel male or female. I, I I felt totally neutered. And so 
I can understand that they're feeling that way, but it's because they've been drinking out of estrogenic plastic bottles their whole life. That's part of the problem. And then um, the uh, anti-testosterone that's now in our water supply. Wow. Okay, so the sunscreens, they're toxic synthetic chemicals that are screwing up our hormones. And what's happening is they block the UVB rays of the sun, which are the burning rays. And unfortunately, the UVB are supposed to work in partnership with the UVA. And it's kind of disrupting that whole mechanism of the body's sensory system. So the body is overriding the normal signals of, oh, I'm burning, I need to get out of the sun because we've got sunblock on. So we stay in the sun even longer, which is going to promote increased risk of skin cancer. Did I get that right? Absolutely, yeah. So you, you lay in the sun. When you start burning, that's nature saying, hey, it's time to get out. You've run out of antioxidants because it's uh -huh. antioxidants uh -huh. are such a great uh, antidote to the solar radiation as well as EMF radiation. And so that's the problem is that you don't burn. So you're sitting there two, three, four, five, ten times longer than you normally would because you're not burning. But then all the infrared rays are going deeper into your into your cells and causing the melanoma. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it, it, it's just it, the whole concept's wrong. The whole concept. And, and I want to talk more about the, the diet and the antioxidants, but just to hit home the point for folks listening, that the sunscreen's blocking the UVB, which is also the part of the sun that helps you produce vitamin D. So it's blocking Absolutely. the component of the sun, which most people know, oh, I get vitamin D from the sun. It's important. A lot of people know that, I should say, not most, but some, or definitely my audience knows that. But if you're wearing conventional sunscreen, you're, you're not letting your body pr make that vitamin D, which is what you're doing it for. And the, the irony is, Dr. Plourd, is the vitamin D is anti-cancer. So the sun is anti-cancer, but the sun helps us make vitamin D. It's just illogical. Like we all have to use our brains. Like, does this make sense? And, and how did human beings, e how did human beings even get here if the sun was dangerous? We wouldn't, we would have been extinct. Absolutely. You're totally right. Absolutely. The, yeah. The vitamin D is essential. And uh, there's studies that show that the further away you get from, Get from the equator, the higher the cancer rate, because you have less and less solar radiation coming into your body to mm -hmm. make, help make that vitamin D. So yeah, it's definitely very, very beneficial. And people with dark yeah. skin, there's a different requirement, right? The melanin, the melanin that creates the darker skins is the best solar protection our skin can have. Absolutely, Barton. The melanin is what people, when they tan, the melanin is what is making the tan color. And that melanin is the best solar protector. And so for people with very dark skin, they have a problem with low vitamin D because their body can't absorb enough of the UVB rays to make the vitamin D. So it's a constant problem. But also they're seeing it because so many people are protecting themselves with sunscreens and clothing and stuff um, mm -hmm. that they're seeing very low vitamin D uh, levels throughout the whole nation, actually throughout the world. Yes. And that's part of the, the uh, recommendation, right, is to have your skin directly exposed to the, uh, the, the direct sunlight and not, you know, the more of your skin that's showing the better, not to mention your skin, but also um, your eyes. So sunglasses are an issue. We want we want the sun to go back to the retina and go into the pineal gland, which produces the melatonin and helps us sleep and all that. Yeah, and it's important to do the early morning sun or the evening sun to protect your eyes. It's, it's definitely important. 
Right on. So, so yes. <laughs> okay. So let's get into, uh, how our diet can actually be a natural internal sunscreen by what we're eating, uh, can prevent us from having to use these toxic poisonous synthetic chemicals that are not only hurting us, but hurting the planet and the ocean life. So you mentioned antioxidants. Uh, what are antioxidants? What would be some great sources of antioxidant foods that we can consume? to help protect our skin and not kill uh, creatures. All the brightly colored, the purples and the reds, all those foods, mm -hmm. those are antioxidants that are creating those colors. And so really, you know, I've heard you want to eat the whole rainbow. You want to eat all of them because they all act differently. Mm -hmm. So they all work synergistically together. So very important to eat them all. The radiations cause oxidation. So when you're bringing in antioxidants, Actually, the body actually moves the antioxidants up in the skin and so protects the, the skin there. And when you run out of antioxidants, that's when you start turning color. But it's really important to eat high antioxidant levels before you get into the sun, you know, for a few weeks prior. So, and I've had several very, very white women show me their arms after being in the Mexican sun. One woman said she would blister after 15 minutes in the in the Mexican sun. She said, look at this, I ate a high antioxidant diet and it barely turned color. And I was in Mexico for two weeks. So we can do it. We don't need to do the, uh, to do all these terrible sunscreens that are so toxic. And the other thing too, is that, uh, is that the electromagnetic radiation is ant is oxidation. Mm -hmm. And so the antioxidant diet is very good for the uh, radiation problems. So um, men, testicles or the cells are harmed. And if they eat uh, vitamin D and vitamin C, then they're protected. The cells are protected from their cell phone in their pocket. So yeah. the antioxidant mm -hmm. diet is, is very critical. In my first book, the uh, sunscreen's biohazard. I was amazed at the amount of work that had been done already. Um, it just, because it, it's very simple, easy test to do, high, medium, and low antioxidant, put people in the sun, very, very simple to ask. Isn't that but amazing? All of, that yeah, all of the, all of the spices, the cinnamon and cloves, all, yeah, and uh, garlic, but I've got a whole chapter of all the food, mm -hmm. um, and I've got a guide, separate guide if you just want to get the guide of all foods that we need to eat, not only for the solar protection, but also for the EMF protection. Isn't that funny how they go together? Makes sense. Uh, because it's all radiation. I mean, the sun radiation is still radiation. It's just natural as opposed to man-made, you know. So uh, these the foods are our internal protection, uh, watermelon, tomatoes, turmeric, green tea, uh, berries, chlorophyll, of course, chocolate, my favorite. You mentioned all the spices. I was so thrilled when I saw that. <laughs> Me too. I was like, right on. I have my favorite chocolate on my, my e-store. I have my great cacao, um, lycopene, which is the tomato. So, you know, it's like all these things the food we eat, the natural sunlight. I mean, it's all the creator put this all here as one big system to work together. Like, let's get with the program, everybody. You know, it's not complicated. People think it's like such a big deal to be healthy and it's so hard. And it's like, no, I get it. Different parts of the world, it's harder than others. You know, like I used to live in one area that I couldn't go out to dinner because everything was either a sub shop or a pizza shop. So yes, technically it was a little bit harder for me to be healthy and have a social life, but it's doable is what I'm saying. So it's not fancy it, and it's maybe it's not even sexy, you know, like go outside, put your feet on the ground, put your face in the sun, get off your damn phone and, and take a walk with a friend, you know, like go to bed when you're tired. Like it's just simple stuff, but that's how we're supposed to work. So if you really want to feel and look great, just get with the program, you know, like just simplify your life. That's it. Right. Yeah. I, read uh, autobiography of Agatha Christie, the mystery writer who mm. wrote Death on the Nile and Murder on the Orient Express. But 
uh, she had gone around the world in 1920. Her husband, they're British, and her husband was working for the British government. And they went on around the world tour to promote British colonies. And uh, she said when they got to, to Hawaii in 1920, she said, everybody smelled like coconuts because coconut can help protect from the solar radiation. So here they were in 1920 already knowing that, that that's how they protected themselves. And they probably knew for decades you know, prior to us. And so this makes you know, it's common sense. It really is common sense to protect ourselves naturally. I love it. I've used coconut oil for years and sometimes i put a little olive oil with it sometimes i put a little essential oils in there um yeah i mean so protect your skin from the inside by what you're eating as well as the outside yes coconut oil but i think it also bears a, a, a mention that you know whatever we're putting on our skin like paul check says my mentor you're drinking it and the thing with your skin is it's a direct main line to your body as opposed to ingesting it which has to be digested enzymes goes through the liver the pathway your skin has no uh barrier it's just boom right in your system that's why a lot of medications are transdermal because they're more immediate so we have to be even more cognizant of the creams the lotion the makeup whatever we're putting on our skin because our body it's like we circumvent any natural protective mechanism we might have in another uh manner absolutely that's very valid and um when i was poisoned with mercury with a dentist hmm. with mercury in my teeth and i almost died uh and it was just really an assault on my body it took me over a year to recover it was that bad of an assault and mm. but the one thing that happened was that i reacted to anything plastic and then i reacted to 99 percent of the lotions that are on the market i just i put it on my skin and in five minutes the inside of my mouth would be burning that's how fast it would go from the hand into your body yeah well it's like putting something sublingual like under under your tongue and then boom it's just like right in your body yeah exactly I wrote two books on sunscreens because I was so horrified that all these new kids safe, titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, are not kids safe. They're not, they just, and they say it's safe for the coral. Well, it might be safe for the coral, it might not kill the coral, but it's killing the phytoplankton in the ocean. So uh -huh. you're killing the bottom of the food chain in the ocean. So you're still harming the ocean with these things. And what they've done in Hawaii They've banned two of the sunscreen chemicals to be sold. And in all the airplanes and in the hotels, they've now got these zinc oxide sunscreens that they're saying are kids safe and coral safe. And they're, they're not. And so I wrote another whole book on the sunscreens because I'm trying to warn people and the thing is that you don't need to use them at all. That's it. That's the thing. You don't even need it. It's all for, for nothing. It's tragic. It's tragic. And, and, and to your point, it's like a bait and switch. It's like the old, oh, this plastic bottle doesn't have BPA because everybody knew, oh, BPA is really bad. You know, it's a xenoestrogen. So now they just substituted one thing for another so they can make this marketing claim. Same goes for, it sounds like for zinc oxide. Oh, it's zinc safe, whatever. But they just used another chemical that used, like you said, and okay, well, now it's not killing the coral reefs, but it's killing the plankton. What's the difference? You know? It's like, it's just, the point is, is stay away from synthetics. We're screwing up the whole ecosystem, everybody. Like, it's it's not, it's like, come on now. Let's look, you know, don't cut off your nose to spite your face. It's like, this is, the bigger issue is the synthetic use of us overriding the natural course of things. And especially to your point, and your research shows, it's all unnecessary. If we eat properly and live properly, we don't need it in the first place exactly right and and we need that vitamin d that it, that the sun's creating so we need to be out there in the sun in the to sun. get our vitamin d dose your work also talks about uh the new vogue thing of people having aerosol 
uh, skin, whatever they call it, I don't even, skin uh, block stuff, you know, so they're spraying themselves at the beach. And I know, like, I hate being near people at the beach as it is, but, um, you know, you get downwind and all of a sudden you're getting a waft of, it's disgusting. It's like going in your lungs. So what were your thoughts on the aerosol skin block stuff? Very, very bad, very dangerous. And you inhale it and it goes into the little alveoli in the lungs and goes to the brain. I mean, it's a very fast circuit, just like I was saying that the hand lotion was in my mouth. It's a very fast circuit. It's, yeah, they should not make aerosol sunscreens at all. It just, it makes no sense. You really don't need to, uh, uh, but you don't need any (laughs) sunscreens. So dangerous. So have you had any um, pushback or anything from the the sunscreen industry about any of the work that you've done or like what, are you making inroads at least to, I don't know, help educate people? Like what's your experience been? Because it's a big industry. Oh, it's huge. It really is huge. And uh, uh, yeah, I got warned when I started talking about the idea of creating these sunscreen books. I got warned to be careful because they're not going to let go of this huge profit margin. They're making millions of dollars a year off this. And it's a very high profit margin. It doesn't cost too much to make it. And then they're selling all this. Yeah, it's so we're, we're trying to keep more like a, a low profile so that we can keep spreading the word. Oops. Well, you're not going to be too low profile now. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No, it's, it's got to get out there. It, it really does. I I just, I, I know I'm going to create another book on gender bending because this is so real Mm -hmm. with these products and uh, yeah, they're not uh, addressing it at all. So, and we need to really do because these kids are so confused they really are confused and like you said it's it's legitimate and i'll just refer people again to the other episode where you were on the show and you talk about your experience with this hysterectomy and you know having you know your your uterus removed changed your uh your your hormones and your drives and your urges and it's very very real i mean we also know that with look at men taking steroids bodybuilding and then you know road rage and steroid rate roy it's called roid rage excuse me roid rage similar to road rage but it's very very real like these are these the, the whole gender bending discussion it's not like to make light of it or say they're you know it's in their head this is a chemical occurrence that's happening it's legit and, and to your point, it's happening because their bodies actually are chemically changed artificially. So, and this, you know, like there's something wrong here, guys. Like we, we can't be allowing this. This isn't fair to the kids. It's true. Because it's artificial. I mean, it's, you know, it, it might not be really what their soul is trying to do. That's very valid. I just, I really like what you said about that because it's, it's very true. And, and the one thing that I, I was going to talk about when we were talking about the problems is that swimming pools, you've got all these kids, all with these different chemicals. So all these different chemicals are in that water and the chlorine actually changes, changes them into a poison, actually causes cancers. Wow. So we've got these kids, we think that we're giving them such a great time and putting them into this chemical soup a chemical toxic soup by using the sunscreens. Uh, where I live, we have 22 pools. I've tried to get the association to at least make one pool sunscreen free. I haven't succeeded yet, but I, I'll keep trying because I get a terrible headache. I, I've been here 40 years. I moved here because of the pools so I could swim every day, but I can't swim in the chemical soup i just can't i get a horrible headache yeah yeah this i mean not to mention all the other skincare products hairsprays oh whatever pick it perfumes colognes name it and and i'll mention too uh with these synthetic chemicals whether they be sunblocks or whatever heated up with the heat of the sun so you're at the beach and you're sweating and it's hot like you're basically putting yourself in an oven so think of just putting, you know, baking a 
lasagna and you're putting, you know, oregano and spices on it, you put it in the oven, it, it heats it up. It, it, it ignites it. So when we're putting the stuff on our skin and then we're going out in the solar heat, we're, we're even magnifying the synthetic poison in our bodies, right? Absorbing more and more. Yeah. Oh, Absorbing it so Lord. deeply. Yes, that's true. Oh, wow. Okay. So, all right. So the answer is, Dr. Plour, don't use them. Instead, have natural from the inside out with a proper high antioxidant diet. Even foods that are exposed to the sun, like solar grown foods, are going to have higher life force, more antioxidants, and using natural coconut oil. What else would you recommend for solutions for people that are practical? Do, do get my guide that uh-huh. has all of the. I, I was amazed at how many foods that we have access to that are uh, antioxidant and can help protect from the solar radiation. It's just, it's just amazing. It's, there's so many um, spices, particularly all the spices are very antioxidant. And I thought that this was interesting that spices go into wintertime foods and the, the reduction of the sun in the wintertime. So using a lot of spices, they can now get the antioxidants in their body that way. So, Oh, what a great idea. So use more spices in the winter to make up for lack of sun. Right, yeah, but all the Christmas breads are, you know, cloves and everything. Cinnamon. Are in there and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My favorite. I actually, I'll tell you a secret. I like cinnamon more than I like chocolate, and that's a lot. <laughs> When I was in Mexico, there was a cinnamon chocolate cake that was oh, absolutely fabulous. Oh, you're killing me. Oh, I love it. Oh, my God. It's a good thing I wasn't with you. I would have been like, get your own. <laughs> right. Wow. Oh, geez. Yeah. You're, you're giving yeah. me some bad ideas. I don't know. Oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. That's fantastic. Well, you know, your work is just, what a life. I mean, you know, and I, I got to hand it to you, too. I mean, You've had a tough go of it. You've been through a lot. You've talked about the mercury and almost dying from that, getting your mental, your, uh, excuse me, your dental extractions and things. And of course it affected you mentally. Um, your, your hysterectomy situation and you were on the operating table and the doctor took out your ovaries while he was in there without your consent. I mean, everybody refer to that episode with Dr. Plourd and, and then now your work with the coral reefs and the devastation of them just being stripped bleached out and you you've had a lifetime of research and contribution in, in partnership with your husband and try to get this information out in the world and I'm just going to stand for the audience and say thank you so much for your your endurance your perseverance and your your bravery thank you I I do want to bring up the difference between nano and micro because oh, yes, please. really please. tricking the public with this okay. so um uh, Nanoparticles, they're less than one five thousandth the diameter of a human hair. So we're talking tiny, 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 tiny. And the difference between nano, which is less than 100 nanometers, and micro, 101 nanometers, when you look at the difference, there's no difference. I mean, it's still so tiny, and it can get into the brain, cause all kinds of havoc. And so this whole bit of we're natural mineral, uh, which is zinc, uh, and uh, we're non-nano. It, it's a it's really a lie. It because the non-nano to go up to micro, it's still the studies show that micro causes different type of damage, but just as much damage. So and we've got all these people selling all of this zinc oxide. Uh, sunscreens all over the world and it's not the answer we don't need them and it's causing a lot of harm to our bodies so don't be fooled that it's that it's safe because it's not nano super important point again these it's just like another instance of these marketing uh like tactics with these i don't know just like these buzzwords and these key terms and it's like kind of like a I don't want to say stretching the truth, but it's just kind of like, 
I, I don't know what you would call it. It's just almost manipulating the, the words to kind of get people to think they're doing a good thing and they're really not. It's like, oh, my God, what a mess. Um, just get back to natural, right? That's the bottom line, I think, here. Are there, are there any other last thoughts or just things that you want to mention other than that very important point where as we wrap up here that la- other than, and I'm going to ask you how you can, how people can find you and your, your wonderful two books on this subject. But before we get to that, any last thoughts or any things that need to be said? It's to realize that the commercials that are saying that you must use sunscreen are just to sell their sunscreen product, just to make money. It's not true. And, uh, and it's so pervasive. It's such a push that the editor who edited my two books uh, on sunscreen, she called me about a week after the second one was set for publishing. And she said, I just heard a commercial and we've got to use sunscreen. I mean, after she had read all of this evidence about how bad it is, how it doesn't work, and the commercial was so impactful, and that's what they're doing to us, and it's really important. You got it. So my son was like 60 years old, and when I came home from the hospital, they said, strip his body, put him out in the sun, rotate him like a like a pit in you know, a spit in the sun because he needs the sun and Mm -hmm. look how far we've gone in 60 years. It it just makes no sense. It really doesn't. We do need the sun. Yeah. That's such a great point. And I know too, like even opening up your mouth in the sun, not to mention your eyes, but letting the sun hit different parts of your body is so important because, you know, every cell in your body has receptors for light. And again, light is like food. It's information. It's information for your cells to function properly. We need it to not only live, but thrive and feel good and to sleep. That's another really interesting connection. The sun, the exposure to the sun in the day, particularly morning light, helps you sleep better at night. So if you want to sleep better, get outside in the sun. Like get your skin in the sun, get your eyes in the sun, get your feet on the ground. Watch how much better you'll sleep at night. And that's amazing. And lack of sleep is a huge problem, especially in America. Huge really is. problem. Yeah. Okay. How can people find you? Let's hear about your two books and anything else that you want to direct us to, please. Okay. So the first sunscreen book is Sunscreen's Biohazard, Treat as Hazardous Waste. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just so shocked at how bad it is and and how toxic it is. Uh, that's why I said treat as, as hazardous waste because it is. And then the second one is um, sunscreen's biohazard two proof of toxicity keeps piling up, and it does. It just it, the more I read. In fact, I was just looking this this in the last few days that they're now thinking of putting enzymes, non-human enzymes, into the sunscreens that are phytoprotective, photoprotective of other animals. So these other animals have these enzymes that protect them from the sun, but they're going to put those in our sunscreen. And they're not human. It just, it just, they just keep screwing it up. More and more. Well, it's the same as vaccines, you know, putting like fecal material or fetal material, excuse me, and, you know, just different, uh, you know, desiccated organs of this and that animal. I mean, it's not natural. Like, I don't want that in my body. Like, that's, yeah, yeah. Like, we think we're so fancy and advanced. It's like, no, that's just wrong. <laughs> this, it's not natural, you know, like, no. Wow. These, these sunscreen chemicals are not natural. They're definitely not. And there we you need go. To- and, yeah. and all they're yeah. doing is adding to putting in more not natural things. And screwing up the whole ecosystem. Well, I like to call SPF the synthetic preventing function. <laughs> that, that's what SPF should stand for. The synthetics preventing function, not uh, what's, it, what's it, sun protection factor. <laughs> my right. Own, my own acronym. Yeah, no, that's great. 
<laughs> oh, you said it. That's okay. Uh, hey, as long as you give me credit, Dr. Plourd. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to quote you. You're going to quote me. I'm just teasing. Okay. No, please use it if it helps people to wake up and smell the coffee. Okay. Is there a website you'd like to direct people to other than two of your fabulous books that we mentioned? So uh, we do have sunscreensbiohazard.com mm-hmm. and it's sunscreens plural. Uh, so you got to put the S on it. Because somebody's gotten sunscreen biohazard and that goes to a sunscreen block. Um, so, but, and then that website we're kind of having a little bit of trouble with. So do go to our EMF, bestemfproducts.com because we've got the books on there too. And so that we've been working on that to get all the bugs out. We don't quite know what's going on with sunscreen. So if it's, if you're having a problem with it, email us because we definitely want to get books to you and this information to you and the guide to you. The guide is a very condensed uh, antioxidant food food guide all great stuff all great stuff okay everybody those will be in the show notes too in case you're driving or busy multitasking like many of us do um dr plourd thank you so much this has been amazing i really appreciate you coming back on the show and uh make sure you let us know when that new book is coming out that you mentioned working on book number six are you right yes incredible thank you so much for coming on the show thank you for having me really thanks for getting the word out it's critical for the whole world agreed agreed and okay everybody now you got to do your part help us get this word out like this is what's happening let's save the ocean life because it's not too late you just gotta if every single person took action and spoke up and educate people like hey Maybe it's not doing what you think it is. And even worse than that, it's actually hurting not only you, but the planet. We all have to speak up. It has to come from all of us to really turn the ship around. So please share the show. Check out Dr. Plourd's work. And hey, uh, Can I just please. mention about turning it around during mm-hmm. COVID when they shut off the beaches in Hawaii? The one beach that was really harmed, it started recovering. The coral started recovering. Now that they're back in there again, it's kind of going away again, but it's definitely proof that we can recover. And you know, the same thing happened when uh, people weren't commuting to work and we didn't have all the pollution and everything. And like Mother Earth got to breathe again. And uh, yeah, like they showed that, I don't remember the different uh, statistics, but different markers of the ecosystem were like actually like improved a little bit so not only the one you mentioned but other ones so that's really encouraging everybody if everybody did it everyone who says oh it's just me every single person did it we would start making a dent in this thing and really turn it around so it's doable we just have to all do it and spread the information and use your voice we all have to speak up we can't just you know be passive about it like spread the word and thank you for doing so okay everybody thank you thank you for helping you got it and thanks again and uh don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode every tuesday they come out not to mention every other friday we have our fast fridays feature thank you so much dr elizabeth plord and we'll see you next time everybody on awakening aphrodite with amy fournier bye-bye Would you like to support my mission to help empower people all over the world to be all of who they truly are? If so, please subscribe to the show, leave a review on iTunes, and share it with a friend. And if you're looking to take immediate action to align your energy and optimize your health, visit amyfournier.com. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite. Let's awaken her together in you. I'm your hostess, Amy Fournier. And I already can't wait to be with you again and for you to hear what I have planned for the next show. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. To learn more about Amy, check out her website, amyfournier.com. That's A-M-Y-F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R.com. You can also check out Amy's live and on-demand virtual fitness and yoga classes and sign up for her newsletter to receive a free mini ebook of three of her top tips for making holistic health a lifestyle. Again, that's amyfournier.com and get your ebook sent to your email immediately. Connect with Amy on the daily on Instagram at fitamytv, F-I-T-A-M-Y-T-V. 
and watch many of the podcast episodes and subtopic clips on her YouTube channel, which is also Fit Amy TV. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time on Awakening Aphrodite.